Hey guys, welcome back to the Joe Jaguar Show. For you guys that don't know who I am, I've been into astronomy since 1993. I call myself Joe Jaguar because if you put a J in front of my last name, you got Jaguar. I have owned the Jaguar, actually two Jaguars uh, at one time. And uh, when I was 17, I was a drummer in a garage band and that was my stage name. I've been interested in astronomy since 1993. I have taught and co-taught a few different schools. I've worked at a telescope store for several years, volunteering my help to people. Now, today I did a video several months ago uh, called Can Any 80 Millimeter Refractor Do Daytime? Now, then I was asked, you know, and I was showing things in the daytime. Now, I was also asked, can you do this video with a 80 millimeter short tube versus an 80 millimeter long tube, what it would look in the eyepiece in the night. So I'm doing that tonight. It's clear, or it's supposed to be clear tonight. And don't know if you can see the moon right there, right there. So there's the moon right there. So it's supposed to be clear. So let's do a test of the short and long version 80 millimeter on the moon and Saturn. Okay guys, here we go. So I got the 80 millimeter F5 refractor. It's been cooling, I would say for close to an hour, which is fine for an 80 millimeter refractor. It's on a CG4. So it's way more than enough than this guy, this guy needs. And here is an 80 millimeter. I believe this is F10. Um, on again, it's a EQ4, so same class, um, and so more than enough. Now, I've got two formulas on on here. Well, you probably can't see that. So I got the 400 millimeter. I uh, I'm gonna with a certain combination it's gonna be at 133 power at its maximum and then this guy got 134 that's one power difference so this is gonna be a good shootout and now you guys will be able to tell what the difference between a short refractor on the planets and then a long version refractor on the planets okay so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a quick visual with this one here the 400 millimeter I'm gonna take it to 41 power and then the long one 36 power, just as the low power before I go up uh, in power. And then, so I'm just gonna quickly do a quick visual in case that when I start filming uh, in the eyepiece, you can't tell the difference because I'm only gonna be using a cell phone, okay? Um, so I just wanna make sure that I uh, test it visually first with my eyes and I'll let you know what the difference is and then I will uh, then switch over uh, to imaging. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so at low power, I mean, you can see craters. I don't know if it's a bit hazy today, but you definitely can see the uh, color fringing. And let me swap out now to 134 power which is a five times power mate uh, Teleview and a 15 millimeter super plaza. You can still see craters. You know, it's not 100% sharp, but maybe a new person would still enjoy it if they're brand spanking new, but it could be because they might have nothing to compare it to. Now, let's look at this guy in the same low power. So we're looking obviously at the moon first. Okay, I found it. I'm not using a finder scope at all. I just pointed and panned and then there we go. Focus. Okay, the focus is all the way out. Okay, so uh, there is still color fringing on the perimeter um, of the moon. But to me, the craters, the mountains, everything looks sharper. Now let's go to the high power. What was the high power of this guy? 6.7, okay. Which 
give me 134 power and then 133 power on that one. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. So, let me see. Okay, I'm just gonna take a second look. I mean, it's not bad there, but it's a bit fuzzy at uh, 133 and, or 134 power. And this one at 133. They're both 80 millimeters. They're both the power seeker line. They're both made by Celestron. They're nothing, definitely an easy round one, low power, which was 41 on the short tube. And then uh, 133 at the high power, uh, 36 on the low power and 134 on the high power. The long version is just way more clear. Now maybe for a brand new person, because they don't know, you know, if you haven't used the telescope, Okay, you can definitely zoom in the craters, you can see the mountain ranges. Uh, there is chromatic operation in both, but the, the craters, the mountain ranges are just more crisp and clean. So definitely you can easily tell, easily. No two ways about it. Okay, let me see if I can show it to you guys. Okay guys, so here's the moon with the short version. Okay, you guys kind of study it. The problem is I can't use the same power because way too much power in the eyepiece. But tell me, okay. That. That's as far as I can blow it up, okay? Now let's go to the long version. Okay, so this is the long version. You can definitely still see chromatic aberration. I blew it up to the most maximum on the other one. And this is the most maximum. Oh, I didn't put it on 4K. Uh, it's too late now, because now both of them. You can see a lot of chromatic aberration, but definitely it's more clear than the other one. Okay, so this is the long version of Saturn. Okay, so this is the long version of Saturn. That's the real movement of it. One more time. I should have put it on 4K. It's okay, I'm doing everything on 1080p, which is okay, but that's okay. There's Saturn in the long 80 millimeter. Okay, and that's on the short tube version. Way fuzzier. Let me see if I can focus a little bit. I mean, you could definitely... It looks better in the eyepiece, but it is moving slower. This is a little bit less power, but the more power you go up, the, the more fuzzier it's gonna get. So 